So I remember the other day, I was hitting a back day, and I was going full on berserk mode, and my gym bro was in the other side, and he was hitting shoulders, because he likes to hit shoulders every single day. Sorry, bro. <laughs> and so, the thing is, it wasn't just any back day. I was going full on berserk mode. I start out with the neutral grip, I just basically went from here, and I start just doing these lat pull downs, and I loaded up a whole bunch of weight, and immediately started with drop sets. I would load in about 80 kgs and then I'd go down to something like 60 and then from there I'd go more so lowering about a weight. And what this has done to the pump is it loaded it up with a whole bunch of fucking blood. And it was more so just the blood that's going to be in the areas that are for the loading and for the strength. And then as soon as I did that, I switched the grip and I went for the two grips and basically I did single handed lat pull downs. And I really focused on good stretch and squeeze. And I could just see my gym bro looking like from, from that side, like from the dumbbell side. And he's looking at me, he's like, bro, like I, I could just see like his, the shocked reaction on his face. Because he's like, for the first time he's seen someone train this intensely. And in fact, like he, after we sat down in the, in the cafe, after we were done with the workout, he was like, you know man, like I genuinely like, never seen someone train this intense like at least in our age group who's like you know like us and it's like that's why i hang around with you and it's i think this is such a powerful like thing that just because you are so good at the gym other guys want to be around you so it's like a point that you probably have to put in your head is that you have to get so good at the gym that pe like people genuinely just want to be around you because you're just such a good force to be around in the gym. But you see, not everybody thought what he thought. A lot of guys around me looked at me all weird because I was doing weird partial reps. And like, in fact, I'll tell you this, it was another back day a while back. And I did this weird stretch move. Like I, I was just done and I was just, like hanging from the la pull down, right? And like I was just seated, I didn't go up, but my arms were fully extended. And I was focusing on the contraction, but it didn't appear so well, like to most people who looked at me. And I could just see the amount of people who are like looking at me like this, and then they're laughing, giggling away and stuff. To me, what I really gave a fuck about was just the pump being completed. And we'll, we'll get into this in just a bit. So as much of an inspirational story the first one is, the second one shows you the other side of the spectrum. It's those judgmental bitches who will keep just showing up to your face and just outright laughing at you. You could see someone who's genuinely obese who will look at you and they will laugh at you when you're the one who should be laughing at them. And it's like, those are, those are the people who have envy levels. And the reason, like, I think I was just so blessed with this is that, like, I read, like, I read a book about the laws of human nature, like the laws of human nature by Robert Greene. And I read this book, we were in school writing all this type of stuff, and I basically read it, so about a couple of months before, like, this stuff started to happen, and I could just immediately start to see these things. Like, genuinely, I would immediately start to see that this person is envying me. Because, like, the book tells you these stuff, and, like, this is some of the greatest reasons to, like, like, to why you should read this book. But it's, it shows you such a, like an, another side of reality, another side of humanity is that when someone's laughing at you, you almost feel like what, what they want you to feel. And yet, strangely enough, you don't have to feel that because that's not the feeling you should be feeling. And so it's like, you need to catch these cues in order to realize that someone envies you. And it's like, that's, that's a whole separate topic, but really like that's definitely something that you shouldn't get into. So the title of this video is Nothing Matters in the Gym But This. And it's muscle activation. It's just that simple. It's just your muscle getting activated. You feeling the muscle. And usually like the greatest metric for this is the pump. Which is why we previously touched on the pump and I said, you know, like I chase the pump. But anyway, I kind of just want to take a brief break and tell you about this thing that I've been working on really hard. It's called the Thrive Protocol. And it's basically the only thing I sell. You see, in the Thrive Protocol, it is easy to get your dream physique. For a long time, I struggled to build my dream physique. I used to be this fat kid who loved the fucking Kit Kats and I struggled for a long time to just build my physique. I had to learn a whole bunch of different stuff. And 
like I went from being a fat kid to being a skinny teenager and from skinny teenager to building my dream physique it took me about three years to build my dream physique and yeah I'll give you all that stuff all the knowledge all these mistakes that I've done throughout this way I'll let you walk that journey without having to go through all these stuff and I'll basically get you to your dream physique I'll take you by the hand and I'll get you to your dream physique in only six to twelve months it's insane you might like just shake your head like what, what the fuck is this guy saying that's just you know I can help you to do that because I've done it to multiple people and like I can show you all the testimonials but I'll say like, I, I really just don't give a fuck <laughs> the best part is you get to start for free you already have a 14 day trial that is basically going to be for free you can try this for free and you can cancel anytime and really like what you're getting out of this you're going to get the courses like the four main core like programs are going to help you to build your dream physique and so like even if you decided that you didn't want all the other services and you didn't want to pay for those services you could still basically just get those stuff and even get up like some of the features that you're going to get in there and cancel anytime for that 14 day trial ends and so you have nothing to lose. If you want to learn more about this, I'll just leave a full video I made about this. I discuss everything about it, all these types of different offers I've created, and all these types of different, like stuff. Definitely check it out. It's truly like the greatest opportunity you can get your hands on. And I'm giving you all this stuff for free. It's ridiculous. So I have a promise to you. I will help you get more muscle activation by watching this video today. Because it is the only thing that really matters in the gym. If you have muscle activation, you basically will get the gains tomorrow. And if you get the gains tomorrow, you're going to build your dream physique faster. That's really the, the key equation here. It's just as simple as you get the gains and you build your dream physique. And so you want to maximize like each one of those in order to actually get to like your dream outcome, which is the dream physique. And so basically what we want to do is we want to maximize muscle activation. It's like the amount of work you do. And it's basically like the core amount of effort that you have to put on to, into your muscle so that it will grow even big, like stronger. And that's really like the main point. Some people will tell you, oh, you don't have to train till soreness. I don't believe in that ideology personally. I believe that you should train to failure in order to actually, like if you want any significant gains, you have to train to failure. That's just my perception of it. Like you can, like, I don't know, like you can cite me all your studies and stuff, but honestly, I haven't really been ever convinced in that ideology personally because it just didn't serve me well. As we touched briefly, the best metric on that is simply going to be the pump because your pump clearly shows you like how much like your your muscle you can basically just feel and look at and you can see it in the potential amount of muscle like you'd be building in the next week, right? And it's like when the pump gets really full and it's like it's almost like your bicep cannot be extended. That's called a full pump. So I, I we probably have done this before, at least like in your first days. Where you, you trained and you, your pump just immediately gets full. Like you would just do one bicep curl. And you just, you can't even extend your arm now. And this is what we call a full pump. And we want to chase this in every single workout. This means that you basically have obliterated the muscle. You've destroyed the muscle. And that's exactly what we want. Because then again, going back to the main equation. Destroy the muscle equals more gains. Which means you're doing your gym physique faster. And so this means that you have to endure that pain of the next day and whatever. But honestly, like a lot of people, I'll just kind of side note, but a lot of people find the pain to be something that's bad. I find the pain to be a pleasure to be in. And it's, it's weird. I don't know. Like, I guess I'm, some horny motherfucker is going to like kind of cut this out of context. But really, I, I find the pain to be enjoyable. Like, I find it to be, like, it's so enjoyable that I have a soreness. Like, I could, like, right now, my back is sore because I just, just obliterated it like yesterday. And some people would have been crying about this. They would have been, oh, man, like, my back's so sore. And yet, for me at least, it's like, bro, I love this feeling. And it's like, I'm surprised when my back isn't sore. I'm sad when my back isn't sore. And this is what differentiates, like, potentially me and you is that you are scared of getting sore. I enjoy it. I want it. I chase it. And I think this is something that you just got to perhaps change in you if you find it in yourself that if if you find yourself that you're scared away from this, potentially look into, you know, like obliterating the muscle more. 
try and really increase your intensity so you can basically show yourself, hey, there's nothing scary in this. It's like, bro, like, I feel so sore right now. You can't even imagine. I feel like there's a turtle shell on my back. And yet, I enjoy it. And if you can have that mindset, that is a truly like the best thing that you can have for yourself. But for I must know, I'm talking about intensity and all these types of stuff. But a lot of people have already started with intense training and they need to incorporate intensity, but with perform. So kind of like my second set in the sort of video, I mentioned that I did really like heavy sets, like the first couple of sets and that I went for single handed ones, like single handed lap pull downs. And I really focused on a good stretch and squeeze, almost like really perfectifying the form. And so some people will find that a good mix of these two will help them to achieve the perfect bump. And so, the, like, the first one's quite clear. It's just hitting an intense, like, having a like, clear intensity. And honestly, I can, I'll leave you a video somewhere above here. It's called the Intensity of Electro. I made this a while back. And this is, like, truly one of the best videos I've made on YouTube. And it's basically just talking about how you can ramp up your intensity and stuff like that. It's, it's truly one of the best videos I've ever posted on YouTube. And so our main goal with this is really just to try and find our key balance. How can we incorporate some intensity, like some intense fucking ramping around with the fucking weights and then going for more so of a street, like a squeeze and a stretch type of movement. And to, like basically doing this to maximize the pump, playing with those two metrics so we get the perfect pump, the biggest pump that is. And this is really like our, our main goal in every single workout, to just have a sick pump. If you have that goal, like there is like barely anything between you and your physique if you actually incorporate it right there is barely anything between you and your dream physique besides time that's really just how it is so how about we discuss a bit more about form so basically form is when usually you would go lighter and you would like basically go for more so of a full range of motion so let's try and explain something like a bicep curl some people would go for ha almost half reps so they wouldn't really fully go for a full down stretch i hope you can see my arms but some people wouldn't go for this full down stretch they go more so like this and they just kind of do this movement right here now the difference is you're putting on a lot of damn weight so of course like if you went all the way down it would be much more dangerous first and for second you know it's probably not going to get you so much like it, it will feel really painful but you're going to hit failure much quicker like this part of the movement is gonna be much like easier than this part down here because this part is like it requires some lower weights and so you're gonna reach failure here and you won't be able to reach here and so you might as well just do it here and so like this is something that like the difference between going for intensity like really I like to refer to intensity as just moving on as much weight as possible this is more so for moving on as, as much weight as possible and then this is for full range of motion is there a better or, or like a worse no both of them are both are basically just needed in order to actually like activate the muscle and get the greatest pump possible. That's just how it is. And so I think this is like something to just keep in mind is that this is exactly what form, like training with form is. It's just going for a lighter and full range of motion. That's one of the main things about form. And it's also really just going for a good stretch, then again, and a good squeeze. Now you could go for a good squeeze with heavy weights, but a hard stretch like, you could do it in some movements. So, for example, let's say bench press. You could go for a good stretch here before you actually go up. And you could load up a whole bunch of weight. Let's say, for example, lat pull-downs. But then you try and look at bicep, like, lat pull-downs, you could go for a good stretch up there. But let's say, for example, for bicep curls, you could probably go for a good stretch, like a good squeeze. But you can't go for a good stretch because it's, 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 it's such a vital position. Like, you don't want to risk this tendon here tearing, right? And so, usually... It's almost like you just want to move around as much weight. Going down that extra mile will hit, like make you hit failure, and that's not what you want to do because you want to lift heavy. And so then again, it's like setting priorities for the like specific set is also one of the key stuff that you would keep in mind. Some of the greatest ways that I like to fix my form is to basically just set my phone around or to basically like ask a, a person in the gym or a friend of mine, just take a video of me. Like as I'm hitting the workout, I would like to see how I hit it. And so, like, it's either, like, you could find a mirror or something, but, like, you probably won't look in the mirror. You would be, like, hitting full intensity, moving your head all over the place. And so it's much better to have a video on you. Just get someone to record a video of you, like, and see how you actually hit the workout. You'd be surprised. Like, I used to hit bench press from here, doing like this. 
And it's like, that's called a shoulder press. That's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not really like a bench press, but I used to do it from all the way here. That's how I used to do my bench press. And then I realized, oh wait, like what the fuck is that? Just do this. And that was more so just a matter of doing like the right form because I just saw what my, my like mistake was. And I, like, I made a video on this. One of the greatest skills you can have in life is just finding the constraint, finding your problem. Because as soon as you find your problem, you can basically face it. Like one of the main thing about problems is not that you, like they're hard to solve, at least for most problems, but it's that they're just hard to find. It's like, it's, it's crazy really. But yeah, we're not really told like how to do these stuff. Nobody really teaches us how to find the problem. It's, it's quite crazy. It's one of the greatest skills you can have. But then again, it's like it shows you the employee mindset we're, we're taught again. Another good way is basically just having coaches. So like, it's it's quite simple. For the first like, let's say, like, th like th 30 days, just have a coach. You can pay a personal trainer and he'll just like look at you as you're training. He'll be like, oh no, 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 don't do this. Hit it from here. And I'll just keep fucking emphasizing. And it's like, it's just, I, I personally don't really like the idea of personal trainers. I've had, yeah, I've had a personal trainer myself, but it's like, I feel like they're they're almost like too philosophical. They like to just basically come up to your face. They're like, oh no, do this, do that. Oh no, 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 this is better. Oh no, he shouldn't take a stretch. Actually, he should just like move around as much weight as possible. And it's like, you've got like bouncing egos on each other. It's like one of the worst stuff that you can have. So really, like do be aware of this, but try and always like stick to one personal trainer that isn't ego biased and that actually wants to help you like try and find a good coach. And yeah, like just ask a coach around, potentially just have him for the next 30 days, see him, like try and get him to fix your form. And then once you get some good movements and he's like, he can't even find a problem to you, you know you're on a good path. And the final one, and one that I wish I knew earlier and I wish I just started doing earlier is watching Sam Sulik. I wish I just started doing this earlier, man, because let's just all be honest. The more you, like, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. It says scientifically known, right? Which means that you are basically, like the people you hang around with, you will become them. You can predict a man's future by simply looking at the five people he spends the most time with. That's like that's just clear, right? If a person who doesn't smoke hangs around people who smoke for the next 30 days, he's probably going to start, like he's probably going to have a likelihood of smoking that's much higher in that certain time frame. It's just that simple. And yet, and yet, we don't abuse this for our goals. You have the greatest thing in front of you, and it's the internet. You're already using it right now. But how about we use it for something like insanely powerful, which is some damn bodybuilder who's, you know, extremely advanced, who takes steroids, who's been doing this for a long ass while, and who you can just take the expertise of by simply watching his videos. So Sam Sulek is the perfect example of this. I like to watch Sam Sulek a lot. It's just because his videos are so valuable for any bodybuilder who might watch them. Like, you could just find so much details. And it, it could be just as simple as watching the workout section. It doesn't have to be, like, the talk that he does and stuff like that. Because you're probably, like, you know, you wouldn't understand all these philosophical terms. And even if you did, that would still be extremely valuable to you. I usually like to watch the first two parts of the video like until he poses around and then that's usually my end of it. But really, I think this is, like, the main point. You basically got to just watch Sam Sulik. Try and really watch him. See how he hits around the weights. Like, the more you see someone who's professional doing it, the more you will catch different stuff and you'll start to do those yourself. And it could be as simple as looking at him, seeing that he does this weird workout variation and just doing it. And you'll find an increase that's 20% extra in your muscle activation. And that's extremely, like, that's what we're really chasing here after all. And so I hope I fulfilled my promise. I gave you a whole bunch of details and a whole bunch of value on just basically surrounding, like how to get more muscle activation. So if I made my promise, I just want a couple of things from you. If you're interested in just building a dream physique, you can basically check that video out again, like the Thrive Protocol. I left it as a first link in the description. If you want more content like this on bodybuilding and on these different stuff, you can basically like, like this video and you can subscribe to me. I post a lot of bodybuilding videos and some other topics that might interest you as well from productivity and all these types of different stuff. It's like it's quite interesting, really. I try to always base my content around bodybuilding as it is my main thing. And yet I still try and post other stuff on this channel to hopefully maximize the amount of value for you. But in any case, that's kind of what I want to go through. If you commit to the work, you will be getting the results.